Welcome back to Mental Math. This is one of the most famous and fundamental limits in all of calculus. At first glance, it seems simple, but it holds a beautiful secret. Let's evaluate the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches zero. Our first instinct might be to just plug in zero for x. If we do that, we get sine of zero in the numerator and zero in the denominator. Since we know that sine of zero is zero, we arrive at the indeterminate form zero over zero. This tells us nothing about the limit's true value. It's a sign that we need a more sophisticated approach. To truly prove this limit, we must go back to first principles with a beautiful geometric argument using the squeeze theorem. We begin by drawing a unit circle with a radius of 1 centered at the origin. We'll first consider a small positive angle x approaching 0 from the right. Let's define a sector with angle x. The height of the point on the circle is, by definition, sine of x. The height of the tangent line at x equals 1 is tangent of x. By visual inspection, we can establish an inequality of three areas. The area of the small red triangle, the area of the circular sector, and the area of the large green triangle. The area of the red triangle is less than or equal to the area of the sector, which is less than or equal to the area of the green triangle. Using the standard formulas, the area of the red triangle is one-half times base, one times height sine of x. The sector's area is one-half r squared x. The green triangle's area is one-half times base, one times height tangent of x. We can simplify this by multiplying the entire inequality by 2. This leaves us with a core relationship. Sine of x is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to tangent of x. Our goal is to isolate sine of x over x. Since we assumed x is a small positive angle, sine of x is also positive. Therefore, we can divide the entire inequality by sine of x's without changing the direction of the inequalities. Dividing every part by sine of x gives us this expression. We know that tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x, so this final term simplifies beautifully. The inequality now becomes 1 is less than or equal to x over sine x, which is less than or equal to 1 over cosine x. We're almost there. We have x over sine x, but we want sine x over x. To get this, we take the reciprocal of all three parts. This action reverses the direction of both inequality signs. Taking the reciprocals flips the inequalities. Rewriting this in the standard order, we have successfully squeezed our expression between cosine of x and 1. Now we apply the squeeze theorem by taking the limit as x's approaches 0 from the right for all three parts. The limit of cosine of x is 1, and the limit of 1 is 1. This proves that the right-sided limit is 1. Beautiful. A full proof requires us to show that the limit from the left is also 1. We can't use the same geometric picture, so we must use algebra. To evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side, let's make a substitution. Let t equal negative x. As x approaches 0 from the left, our new variable t will approach 0 from the right. Substituting t into our limit gives us the limit of sine of negative t over negative t, as t approaches 0 from the right. Now, we use a key property of the sine function. It is an odd function, meaning sine of negative t e is equal to negative sine of t. This substitution makes the negative signs in the numerator and denominator apparent. The negatives cancel out, leaving us with the limit of sine of t over t as t approaches 0 from the right, which is the exact limit we already proved is equal to 1. Therefore, the left-sided limit is also 1. Since the limit from the right equals the limit from the left, the two-sided limit exists and is equal to 1. Our function f has a well-defined limit at 0. 
Now that we've proven the limit from first principles, we can use Le Hopital's rule as a quick verification. Note, using this as the primary proof is circular reasoning because the derivative of sine itself depends on this very limit. Since the limit is of the form 0 over 0, we take the derivative of the top and bottom. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and the derivative of x is 1. Plugging in 0, we get cosine of 0 over 1, which is 1. This confirms our rigorous proof. Let's summarize our findings. Through a rigorous geometric proof and algebraic completion, we have definitively shown that this fundamental limit is equal to 1. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this geometric proof of one of calculus's most fundamental limits, hit that like button and subscribe for more mathematical insights. See you next time.